Welcome to HPF News with Scoop Singleton, your faithful source for all the news you could do without. Good morning, High Point. I'm Scoop Singleton, your news anchorman. Our top story this morning, High Point's very own Executive Director Amy Stevens has officially earned her doctorate degree. She asks that you not call her Dr. Stevens and that you not show her any rashes. She's not that kind of doctor. And now for this week's announcements. The Peacemakers meeting scheduled for today has been canceled because of a conflict. And the men's ministry would like to borrow a couple of electric girdles for Saturday's pancake breakfast. My apologies. That would be electric griddles. And now we turn to our theological correspondent, Pharisee Crouch, with her views on today's verses. Pharisee? Pharisee, you okay? I'm mad. I'm mad at heaven, and I don't want to talk about it. What? What? I don't like grapes. I don't like grapes. I read in the word this morning that said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for grapes are your reward in heaven. Pharisee. I don't like grapes. They're high glycemic. Everybody can't eat them. I mean, as a matter of fact, I like apples. Why come it can't be but, apples? Pharisee. I mean, not the kind of apples that Adam and Eve had. I don't like that. I want a Fuji apple, like a nice, crisp Fuji apple. I mean, that's Fer- what I like. I don't like grapes. Pharisee. Why is that be great? Pharisee. What? <laughs> it's, you're not getting grapes. Excuse you? Now you trying to tell me I'm not going to get my award in heaven? Who died and made you? It's great. Great. Great is your reward in heaven, not grapes. I know that's right. And with a more sound theological approach, here's Gino. Whatever. Well, good morning, my friends. Welcome to guests, especially. We're really glad you're here. A lot of you are here, I know, for the baby dedication, and if you just happened to visit today, you're going, what is going on? But you're the one I want to talk to about right now. Um, my name is Gino, and I'm on the uh, preaching team, and I'm a shepherd here. just want to say hello to everybody, especially the live stream folks. I'm glad you're here. Um, if you're visiting, you've found out a few things about this church already. You have found out that every fifth Sunday, we do family Sunday. Amen. Amen. You have found out that we have a preaching team. Our lead pastor, T.W. Davis, is not up here every Sunday. And you have found out that here, when we take up an offering, some of us go, woohoo! And some of us go, <laughs> but either way, we're cheerful givers. We're, we're glad you're here. We welcome you. And we hope that you do not feel like an outsider. What about the rest of you? When have you ever felt like an outsider? You didn't know what was going to happen at, this, at the place where you were. Kids, maybe you've been the new kid at school, at a job, among some new friends. Maybe you're like my son Micah, who has had to start at two elementary schools, two middle schools, and this year alone, he had to start high school, learn the ropes at high school marching band and in soccer. So when you're the new kid and you're the outsider, you're kind of just like always wondering, what do we do? But it happens to adults too. Kids, it happens to adults too. We switch jobs, we move to other locations, we go to a different church and we have to figure out how things are there. We get married, right? We get married, and we have to learn, oh, in this family, this Christmas day, you know? Or maybe you got married, and you had to relearn how to fold the towels. (laughs) I thought you were going to go do something with the kids. I like the way we fold towels. I worked for Leander Independent School District for 15 years. It is a big district. There are close to 30 elementary schools there. Two years ago, I transferred to Liberty Hill. Five schools. Very, very different. First day of school, I was greeted with, Welcome to Liberty Hill, boy. We do things a little different around here. 
Don't be bringing any weirdness out here. And that was my principal, but she turned out to be really nice. <laughs> and she does not chew tobacco. She dips snuff, like, just like her mama does. So I bring this up because I think, I think as Jesus was presenting the Sermon on the Mount, and there were people that were wanting to sincerely become followers of him, there were people who they knew, their people had for thousands of years been waiting for the Messiah. Was this him? Is this the kingdom? What's it going to be like? They were excited, but they were all also outsiders. And they were here to hear him talk about what it's going to be like to be a, king, a citizen of this new kingdom. Um, so I look at the, the Bible like an owner's manual. But I look at the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount kind of like you would see a student manual when you get to a new school or a, an employee manual at a new job. It helps you know how things are going to be around here. So let's pray as we get into today's verses. Father God, we thank you. Father, we thank you that um, we're going to do things differently around here because of you. You brought the kingdom, Jesus, and you have called us to be citizens of that kingdom, and you want us to continue the work of increasing the kingdom for your namesake. So Holy Spirit, come and open our eyes to your word, that we would behold wonderful things in your law. I thank you that you can speak so many different things to every single one of us. No matter what I say, you speak what each of these hearts needs to hear. And I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so today we're looking at Matthew 5, 11 through 16. Um, if you're a guest, you're about to find out something new about us. Uh, we love to give away Bibles. So if you showed up and you don't have a Bible, we have some in the back. If you don't own a Bible, this one's yours to keep. All right. <clears throat> Blessed are you, we're, we're in Matthew 5, 11 through 16. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all, all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. So I want to go a little bit deeper into these verses, but I'm going to do them in, uh, not in the order that we just read them. Let's talk about what it means to be salt and light first. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, how shall saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Jesus describes his followers, the kingdom citizens, you. He describes you, us, as the salt of the earth. Now, back then, there were two purposes for salt, preserving fruit, food and enhancing the flavor. Jesus might have meant that we are called to be preservatives in this world. Most of the time, we don't want preservatives in our food, right? But we want preservatives in the world. One commentator said, in order to slow down the advancement of moral and spiritual decay. We see that around us. We're supposed to preserve what God, God's call and God's standards. Martin Luther King Jr. said that the church is the conscience of the state. So how does the state know about this conscience if we don't speak up somehow, if we don't represent God, if we're not salt? So does that mean you're supposed to get involved in politics? The answer is absolutely do whatever God tells you to do on that. Like how I got out of it? <laughs> Kids, 
you. For you, it might mean that when all the other kids in school or in the neighborhood are doing something that they're not supposed to, you might be the only one who sticks out in the crowd and says, no, I'm not going to do that. And it might even cost you some friends sometimes. Salt was also an enhancer. Could it be that Jesus was also telling the citizens of the kingdom that we're supposed to enhance the flavor of life in this world? What does that mean? Does that mean you have to be the life of the party everywhere you go? No, it doesn't. That's not everyone's personality in here. But what do you bring to the party? How do you enhance the world that you're in, be it work, church, home, the neighborhood? What do you bring to the party? Because every single one of us, no matter what age, we've been given gifts, talents, resources that are from God from God for others. How can you stand out at school, at work, in your neighborhood? How can you stand out as a believer? And how can you make God's way stand out from the normal way of doing things? And kids, it is not too, it is not too early to start asking God, how can I serve? What are my gifts? What do you want me to do? When food has salt, you know it. Let's live in a way that if we're around, people know Jesus is around. In Spanish, the word for salt, salt, I I reversed that. In Spanish, the word for salt is sal, just S-A-L, sal, like salary. Salary comes from an ancient word meaning salt money. That's how valuable salt was back then. It, It would even... It would even be used as currency. My friends, that's how valuable the gospel is, and we have it. We have the gospel, and perhaps Jesus was telling his disciples or kingdom citizens just how important we would be to the lost and to those who are living in the dark. After all, you are the light of the world, and a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. I have a really, real hard time reading that scripture without wanting to just say, no, because of the kid's song, right? Don't put it under a bushel. No, put it on a stand. <laughs> in the same way, you let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So this show and tell, students, this is what lamps looked like, household lamps looked like in the first century. They're low, they're shallow, and they don't really put out that much light. If you put it on a lampstand, most of the houses were about, were were one room, modest one room homes. And a lampstand I always figured was kind of like, like a mic, something like this, right? And put it up. But what I, what I discovered was that they would have like a little shelf, almost like a brick that's jutting out. And you couldn't put much else on it. It was designed for this, so it only had to be about this big. And you put this up on the lampstand, and then something this small could light up the whole room for everyone that was in it. A light was not meant to be hidden. To put it under a basket, to put it under a bushel, it's ridiculous, right? We are not supposed to be hidden. Like a city on a mountain, you can't hide a city on a mountain. Our light is not supposed to be hidden. It's supposed to be seen by others. Um, Light is an important theme in Scripture. When light comes, darkness has to leave. Light and dark point to good and evil in the world, to good and evil in our hearts. Jesus says that he is the light of the world. He has come to bring light into the darkness, and now his Holy Spirit has enlightened us, has put light in us, and puts, puts it in us. That light is in us, so where we go, darkness has to flee. That's why he told the kingdom citizens, and he tells you this morning, you are the light of the world. Christine Kane is an author and a speaker. She's an evangelist, and she's the founder of A21. That's a ministry that deals uh, with combating human trafficking. And she tells the story of a little girl, her little girl, getting a flashlight as a gift, Christmas, birthday, whatever. Um, They're from Australia, so she calls it a torch, not a flashlight. But she got a flashlight, 
And it's what the little girl wanted, and she's really excited about it when she gets it. And as soon as she gets it, she says, Mommy, let's go find some darkness. That's where it's supposed to be. What good is this little light of mine if I only share it here with you? Let's go find some darkness. After all, if we keep coming here, only here, and sharing our light here with all these lights, somebody's going to get burned. Mm, sit on that one for a while. We need to be out there. You are the light of the world. Go into the darkness as God leads you and share that light and take someone with you. So let's look at the first part of our verses for today. Blessed are you. Blessed are you when others revile you and they persecute you and they utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. All right, so hold up. We are the light of the world. We get rid of darkness. We are the salt of the earth. We enhance the world around us. Then why do people revile us, which means they say terrible things about us? Why are we going to be persecuted? Because some people like the darkness. They like it so much They'll, that they'll come after anyone who wants to get rid of the darkness. And that's confusing to us. That's confusing to us because we know. We know what Jesus has done for us, what he did on the cross and through his resurrection. We know that he's brought light into our darkness, and we just want to share that with other people. He told us to do that. But Jesus also said in John 15, if the world hates you, Know that it hated me before it hated you. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. So we're going to be salt and light, and we're going to get persecuted for it. And then this is how we're supposed to react. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We're supposed to rejoice and be glad just like the ones who've gone before us. Like in Acts 5, where it says of the apostles, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and they charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. Then, when they left the presence of the council, rejoicing, sorry, then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus. Man, that we would be there. And Peter tells us, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. All right, so again, to review, we're going to be good to the world by bringing them light, by being salt and enhancing it with Christ. The world will hate us and even punish us, and we will rejoice. In fact, the word that is used for rejoice is the description is, with exceeding gladness. It's the same rejoicing that was used when it talks about the shepherds and the wise men seeing the star and knowing that the Messiah was coming. But not only that, according to the Beatitudes, according to the Sermon on the Mount, we will also bring to the picture, we will also be <clears throat> poor in spirit, we'll mourn, we'll be meek, when they hate us and persecute us, we will hunger and thirst for righteousness, even if it's nowhere to be found around us. We will be merciful. We will be pure in heart, and we will be peacemakers. That's tough to handle. But you know what? At least those things come with a reward, right? Oh, yeah, that reward, it doesn't always come right away. In fact, most of the rewards we'll get that we get don't come until we see Jesus again. Today's verse has said, great, not grapes, great is your reward in heaven. In heaven. My friends, this does not sound like a good deal. This is not a good way to start a movement. And yet, 
at the Sermon on the Mount, many of those disciples stayed, and they kept listening for more and more. And it wasn't just because of the miracles and the food and the, the fish and the... It was because of Jesus. They stayed. They heard that. We hear this, and we know it's coming. Some of us have experienced it already. And they stay. We stay. Why? Because we have tasted of and we have seen the goodness of the Lord. Where else would we go? He has the words of eternal life. We go to him because he calls us to be meek and merciful and to mourn and to be peacemakers. And that is not in me. It's in him. So I go to him, and as I dwell in his word, as I dwell with you, others who are trying to do the same, those things get built up in me. I learned a lesson here recently about um, the fruit of the Spirit. And I think it applies to the Beatitudes as well. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. We don't just decide to have those things in our character. We, don't, we can decide to diet. We can decide to start working out. But we can't just decide to have self-control. You know what? I'm going to start having self-control. Today, I'm just going to, I'm going to have self-control. I will not listen to that gossip at work. I'm going to have self-control. I will not eat that other donut. I'm not. Because I have self-control, praise God. I will not click on that website. I will not. That's not the way it works. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from hanging out with Jesus. I'm a branch. I attach myself to the vine. I get grafted into that vine. Whatever fruit that vine bears, I'm going to, I'm going to bear that. Whether it's meat, mourning for the right thing, gentle, kind, whatever it is, it comes from hanging out with Jesus. We know this from hanging out with friends. Young people, bad company corrupts good morals. As a youth pastor, I saw so many young men and women say, I'm going to go hang out with that crowd, and I'm going to bring Jesus to them. Yes, we take the light into the darkness, but you need to be careful. Adults, we need to be careful. The Word even tells us, if someone's in sin, correct them, but be careful that you don't fall into that sin. So many times youth would go and try to bring someone out and they'd end up in that same group or wandering away from Jesus or just other things were more important than church or youth group. Surround yourself with other people who have their eyes on Jesus as well. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Spend time with King Jesus and see if you don't start acting, reacting, serving, and loving more like he did. I'm going to wrap this up with one thing, and then we're going to have some um, Liam, Micah, and, and Joe are going to come up and pray. I'll call you up here in just a second. I'm going to wrap this, wrap this up with this thought. The best part of today's verses for me was this. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The best part of that is that God is our Father. He calls you son. He calls you daughter. If you're not sure about that today, if you're not positive that God is your Father, if you're not sure that he calls you his beloved son or daughter, you're not positive whether you are a citizen of his kingdom. After our friends come up and pray, there'll be some shepherds up here. If you have any questions, we would love to talk to you about it. Thank you guys for being here on Family Sunday.